If we're talking about the world's greatest rice dishes, biryani has to be right up there at the top. The problem is that it can be complicated and you need to have a rigorously tested recipe to get it just right. Now I've broken it down into very easy steps so that by the end of this recipe, you can be making the perfect lamb biryani. channel typically lamb videos are like a curse they just never do well I don't know why I don't know why no one wants to see me cooking lamb but I'm gonna do it anyway because I love lamb biryani and I'm hoping this might change your mind so there's a lot to do here we've got a marinade we need to make a curry we've got fried onions we're blooming saffron we're soaking rice we're making sides oh my goodness there's a lot to do I'm gonna break it down so it's really simple for you and I promise at the end it will totally be worth it Now here we have like the holy trinity of Indian sort of base ingredients. Start off with some ginger, garlic, green chili and salt and then just pound that till it's nice and smooth. Put that into a large bowl and we're going to add all the other spices and aromatics here. So we've got ground coriander, garam masala, turmeric, Kashmiri chili powder and some yogurt. I give all of that a mix and the beauty of this kind of marinade is that you've got the spices for the flavor, you've got the hint of chili and the garlic and the ginger and then the yogurt also gives you the tenderizing kind of aspect that you want. The point with the lamb is that you want to cut it into bigger chunks than you actually think because when we go to make the curry the curry kind of simmers down and the lamb pieces get a lot smaller. Start with some really nice big strips and then chunks that are pretty large sort of about this size the lamb can go into your marinade this marinade needs at least two hours to properly do the flavoring and tenderizing that I want it to do don't skimp on that because you need it so here is some lamb that I marinated yesterday so we can go ahead and make my curry You want to heat up some ghee in a pan and then add the lamb. Now just toss that around, keep it sizzling. I don't want a really hard heat, I just want those spices and aromatics starting to break down. So after three or four minutes in the pan, now you can just put a lid on, turn the heat down to medium low and let it do its thing for about two hours or until that lamb is full apart tender. So what I wanna find out here is if my lamb has actually gotten all the way tender and let's have a look, oh my goodness, so good. So this lamb curry part of the recipe is something that you could do the day before. It doesn't have to be a project all in one day. But now that I have my lamb curry, I need to get on to making all of the other components before I can start building the biryani. So I've got some hot oil here. I'm going to fry off my red onion slices. And here's the thing, you need to be really patient. I want that onion to turn deeply golden and crispy, and that's gonna take at least 10 minutes, but you need to be here looking after them like a little baby, little fried onion babies. <coughs> take the red onion out and just let it drain on some paper towel. I'm gonna start off with basmati rice. And you'd think you'd just throw the rice in the pot, which is not the case. You need to do a bit of soaking first of all. So let's get these grains soaked. Set that aside for 30 minutes. Do not skip the 30 minutes. Now when it comes to cooking the rice, I actually wanna infuse the water with these spices first of all. So I've got cloves, cardamom pods, a cinnamon stick, bay leaves, and some salt. I'm just gonna bring that water up to a boil. Now I realized after I put the water in this pot that it's too small, so make sure your pot is big enough to hold the water and the rice. Drain your rice, transfer it into the water, bring it up to a boil and then let it cook for five minutes. The rice won't be cooked through at this point, but don't worry, it'll finish cooking later on. You wanna strain the rice, but keep all those beautiful spices because we do want that for our biryani later on. 
what is saffron blooming sounds like flowers or something weird. It's not, it's just the way we release the flavor from saffron, which is very expensive. So you don't wanna stuff it up. Now, start off with milk. Don't turn the heat on yet. Your saffron goes in. And the key to blooming saffron or releasing saffron's flavor and color is not to shock it too much. It's very temperamental. So just put the heat on really gently and then just swirl it around just until it's like blood temperature. Put your finger in there and you should be able to just maybe slightly feel that it's a little bit warm. Take it off the heat then and then let it sit for 15 minutes. So we've had quite a fun time so far. Look at all the bits and pieces we have ready. In addition to what we've done, I also chopped up some fresh mint and some fresh coriander. And now we are at the really fun stage, building the biryani. Okay, so start off with the lamb in the bottom of a heavy based pot, add half of the rice and just really kind of pack that down over the top of the lamb. Now sprinkle with half of the crispy fried onions and then sprinkle with some chopped coriander and mint then pack on the rest of the rice and then just do that again. Rice, onion, herbs, and then finally we have our saffron milk. Just drizzle the saffron around in a circular motion and that will give us like a mix of the golden and the white grains that we want throughout the biryani. Cover that with two layers of foil, put the lid on and then turn the heat to medium low and cook for 15 minutes. Then turn the heat off and let it rest for another 20 minutes without peaking. Don't open the lid. While your biryani is cooking, you've got time to make two really quick sides here. So we're going to make a cucumber tomato salad, which is just cucumber, tomatoes, red onion, chopped coriander and mint, some cumin and some salt and lemon juice. Give that a mix and just pop it in the fridge until you're ready to serve. Another optional side is an onion raita. You need natural yogurt, red onion, green chili, some coriander and mint, a little bit of salt, mix that and leave it until you're ready to serve. So here we are, it's the moment of truth. And to be honest, if you've got a recipe that isn't perfect, there's nothing you can do right now. But I'm confident because I tested this recipe literally like a million times. So let's get in here. Oh, that smell right now, so good. The onions, the curry, the spices and those herbs, amazing. And you wanna dig right in there, right to the bottom, scoop out what you can. And then see that layering? You've got the lamb, you've got the different grains of rice, yellow, white, the herbs, everything. Ah, so good. So there you go, friends. It's a bit of a journeyman kind of recipe, but so totally worth it in the end. I mean, look at that rice. It, it looks like a celebration on a platter, literally. And then you've got all the sides here. So I'm gonna grab some rice and some of my tomato cucumber, a little bit of raita, and I mean, Oh, this bowl looks so good right now. Mm. There's just so much flavor going on. Oh my goodness. The rice, the spices, that lamb curry just permeates everything. All the herbs and the onion. Oh, the rice grains are perfect too. Oh, it's definitely worth it, guys. Mm.